We're here at Cornell University, and this is Kirsten Peterson's lab, the Collective Embodied Intelligence Lab. So in general, throughout all of the projects in this lab, it's about creating large collectives of robots and minimizing uh, the amount of manufacturing that has to go into, into it so that we can uh, manufacture a large amount of robots. One of the projects is the uh, soft sleeve. We have a set of resistive sensors on the sleeve. Each of these black lines on the soft sensor are made up of a carbon black slash Ecoflex gel where they're electrically conductive. And when you inflate it around an object, uh, you can map out the shape of the object uh, by measuring the amount of time that it takes for one of the lines of resistance to stop showing a change in resistance. The end goal of the sleeve is to integrate it into uh, vineyards where you could have a soft robot uh, or a, a soft sensor uh, go up to these grapes, uh, the grape clusters, and inflate it around the grapes without damaging them, and then be able to reconstruct the geometry and get other uh, characteristics out of it, like, for example, its ripeness. So you could also incorporate other types of sensors into this. So what bits of kind of hardware and software are you using for this? I mean, is it fairly standard stuff? Uh, is it so I guess one of the main takeaways of this soft sensor is that it's relatively easy to make. Um, it's basically just a couple of layers of silicone and then one layer of uh, carbon black uh, and Ecoflex gel. And then uh, you hook it up to the Arduino and you inflate it and you can get some data out of it. Uh, it's a pretty simple setup, so the idea would be that people can manufacture these sensors pretty easily. Right here you have a bunch of output lines and basically you have uh, an input in electricity on one side and then the output and you're measuring, measuring the change in resistance um, by taking it out to an Arduino and in the Arduino you can map it out onto a plot where you can see uh, the change in resistance as a function of time. There's one Arduino, and then there's two multiplexers here to get the readings out. And these are the, uh, one is to inflate the sleeve, and then the other is to vacuum the air out. Oh, you've got a big compressor down there. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so this one ha needs a, a, a higher pressure to okay. actually be able to inflate the foam. Is this stuff 3D printed? Uh, no, this is all molded. So it has a good amount of steps in the fabrication process. So basically it's several layers of Ecoflex, a type of silicone, uh, molded around a foam. And the foam gives you a given porosity, 50% porosity, like 50% open space for air to flow through it. That creates an amount of fluid resistance and causes a traveling wave through the robot. Right now the demo is, yeah, for movement. And basically it's inching forward by having a traveling wave across the robot. But what we want to show mainly is that you can have a single inlet and then have a sequence of actuations uh, enabled by the fluidic resistance from the foam inside the soft robot. Uh, we have some kind of leak. So you use the compressor to build up some pressure and then yeah. in theory it, it yeah. yeah. Okay. It's hypnotic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess something that we can see right here is, uh, I'll turn this off. So what we're trying to show right here is that you can have a single inlet of pressurization and then using the foam inside um, with a 50% porosity of 50% uh, amount of open space then you can create an amount, an amount of fluid resistance. And then with that, you can use it to create a sequence of actuations. The neat thing about this is that it's embedded into the design of it, right? So the foam inside it creates that amount of fluid resistance that allows for the delay between the first leg and then and the second leg and the third leg. I guess um, because it's air, air is pretty inviscid, uh, has a very low vis viscosity. So you don't see the difference as much as if it was being inflated by water. This was an initial project. And then the next step uh, that we're doing is uh, creating a uh, program that uses uh, these electrical circuit analogies to automatically design the structure of the foam inside. So if you, 
let's say I have a given porosity at the beginning and then a lower porosity at the end, then I'll have a change in the amount of delay that certain sections of the foam give. And then I could have a program uh, even more control over the sequence of actuations that I have. We have these uh, fluid uh, slash electrical circuit analogies where you can model each of these segments, each component of the robot as a fluidically resistive and a fluidically capacitive region. And if I assign a certain value to that, then I can map out the amount of time that it would take the fluid to uh, reach that part of the foam if I send an impulse of pressure, of air or water. The final goal of this would be to use that uh, automatic, automatic design synthesis program to say, OK, well, we have this robot. Uh, we have this general shape for the robot, and we want uh, an inlet right here and some uh, outlets of pressurization at these points, and we want the sequence of actuation. And, um, and that could be for a swimmer or a crawling robot. And by using um, a foam structure and a single inlet pressurization source, then you could have the sequence of actuations for the soft robot. Single wave, uh, we're working on more complex implementations. And finally, it can even perform something called concertina locomotion. And so, via once it Ethernet gets... down to the, the hex engine, uh, the control system, which is around the side here. If you come around the side, sat up underneath the driver's chair here.